Hello everyone, it's Mayor Barry Manuel. I'm joined today by my council colleagues. Uh, we want to discuss some of the ongoing issues surrounding the impasse in negotiations between the town of Grand Falls, Windsor and its unionized workforce. Um, there has been a lot of activity and a lot of information getting out there and we just want to make sure that we are getting the relevant facts out to our residents. I know the union has been saying a lot in recent days that they want us to get back to the table, they want to negotiate a fair contract, uh, you know, that they're looking for a respectful contract. And what I will say is just for people's information that may be new to this, I'd like to go through the timeline of how we got here quickly. Negotiations uh, began in October of 2020. Uh, we did go to the table with a number of changes we wanted. The union came to the table with a number of asks that they had. Since that time, uh, we have continued to focus on uh, some very key issues. Issues that are of great importance to the town that have financial implications on the future financial status of this town. Right away, we asked for cooperation on those things particularly. And since October, and every time we sat down since, it's been a complete unwillingness to show any cooperation. All we see is a no concessions policy uh, months ago while we were still negotiating in the media. Uh, we go back to the table with a conciliator only to find that their position has not changed. We did have some movement on other issues, but certainly not the most important ones, which I've been talking about uh, regularly, and we will talk about them more. Uh, one is the group insurance and the benefits that our workers receive. They have an exceptional benefits package, uh, better than most, and I know people in the community who I talk to and other people outside uh, would acknowledge that. And we don't begrudge them that, and I've said that many times, but the fact is, the town has been paying 100% of the premiums, and that is cost costing us roughly uh, about $850,000 a year for premiums for our group insurance. That would include the union and the management, because the management are covered under the same plan. So when we talk about the benefits and the, their unwillingness to accept that we would like them to take on future increases, we have to ask ourselves, why would they not want to do that? But what I'm hearing back and what this council is hearing is that they feel that the impact on them and their families is going to be too great. But they are paying nothing now towards this. The town is paying our share and their share. When most other employers pay 50% or some other percentage. So to suggest that they uh, are unwilling to look at the plan when we have offered cooperation. And Mr. White was on an interview, the national rep for CUPE, saying that all they want is some consultation. We are offering that. We want to have a committee so that we can look at the insurance plans to be able to shop around to find something that works for everyone. We could potentially save our unionized workers money. We're not looking to get rid of the health benefits or the benefits as people are suggesting. Like I said, management are under the same benefits plan. Why would they want to ruin what is impacting them themselves? It just doesn't make sense. I'll get into more detail on that later. The other thing is the managerial rights. You know, there's been a lot made about that and I know uh, the union continues to say that we're stripping away their rights, we're tearing up the collective agreement. It's just not true. We did have a lot of things that we were going to ask for because we recognized that a lot of changes needed to be made to our agreement. But since October, the town has taken multiple things off the table, 75% of what we've started with. So we're down to very key issues now, these issues which the union continues to refuse to address. So they want to go back to the table, but I ask them, is it with a changed position? Is it one that's going to cooperate so that we can help the citizens of this town and make sure that we are a sustainable community well into the future? The managerial rights are rights that other management already have. We're talking about the right to determine when a vacancy exists or when to fill a job or 
uh, how to fill a job or whether to fill a job. But job classifications and job descriptions, management right to be able to make the final decision on those. And again, I know people out there are saying, of course, of course management should have those rights because they are basic management principles. They are things that already exist and we just want to have the ability to find efficiencies so that we can look for savings in the future when the opportunity exists. So again, I know it keeps talking about going back to the table. We have gone through a conciliation process. We have had a, a discussion during that time. We have had you know, the union uh, saying they want to go back to the table, but on the other hand, having rallies and uh, a lot of statements being made and information put out. Uh, even during negotiations, I mentioned the zero concession policy. So basically, they don't want to bargain anything. They want to say, we want everything to stay the same, but we also want this. And that's one thing I'm hearing, is that I'm told that this is all about what the town wants to take and the union wants nothing. It is not the case. The union are asking for wage increase. The union are asking for increase in their pension. They're asking for an increase in their clothing allowance on an annual basis. These are all things that have financial implications to the town and obviously are asks that come with a significant cost. And I will get into more detail with them in the future, uh, but really, you know, it's very disappointing to know that we're at this point and that this has come to where it has because we just wanted some cooperation at the beginning for the best interest of the town and we just haven't received it. And now this is what it has turned into. As I said, all these things that we're talking about will have financial implications on the taxpayers. And we want to talk more about that. What we're hearing a lot is that they want a fair agreement. They want a respectable agreement. Well, I have to say that their agreement is fair now. The collective agreement for Grand Falls Windsor is amongst the best in the province. They're comparable or better with wages. You have better benefits in terms of 100% being paid by the employer. You have a pension that is amongst the best in the province. These things exist now. And when you talk about working conditions and, uh, you know, the uh, having some dignity in the workplace, these are things that have never been brought up at the negotiating table. These are things that are outside of negotiation, and I would suggest that if the union would like to speak about those th things, we'd certainly be interested in doing that. This council has had a concerted effort put into wanting to improve relations. That's the ironic part here. We want things to get better. We want employee morale to, to improve, and we're willing to discuss that, but it has nothing to do with negotiations. We know that there was a, uh, a rally, two rallies now, I believe. Uh, I did watch the rally last night, and I would suggest that all citizens watch it. Go on and see the sorts of things that are being said. Like, I am really disappointed with how this is being handled. You have people from unions being flown in all over the place, driving in, talking about their 700,000 QP, 700, QP members across the country. They're going to come fight for this. We better watch out. They're threatening our positions in this. They are saying nasty things. And you want to talk about respect? Who's respecting who? So for us, we want to stick with our message. When we have the NDP leader, Alison Coffin, getting up, and saying, the easy thing to do is to lock these people out. The hard thing to do is come back to the table with a fair proposal that will give these employees good wages, fair wages, decent wages. There was lots of different words used. Good health benefits. They already have these things. And to suggest that I know was mentioned about these employees, you know, they're going to have to decide.
between putting their kids in dance or putting meals on the table? Really? These employees get a very fair wage, more than fair, more than average in our community. These employees get great benefits. And to suggest that it's going to come down to a decision between kids' programs and meals on the table, I would ask you, what about the rest of the community? Our town employees are amongst the best equipped to deal with the realities of our financial situation and a pandemic that we just went through. There's reference to the Dominion strike and trying to compare that to this. The Dominion strike was with a national corporation about making profit. We had people here who were great workers, essential workers called upon during the pandemic who were making $13 an hour, who wanted to make $15 an hour. Our town employees make twice that with all benefits and all kinds of other things built in with time and a half and double time and holiday pay and sick pay. And, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, so you don't want us to touch anything to do with any impact on your pocketbook, no matter how small it is, but yet you're not willing to understand that if you don't pay for it, the citizens of this community will. And as I said, with regards to asks, there have been financial asks that have implications on our finances. We are expecting the provincial government to continue to downgrade their financial support, to download responsibilities onto the municipalities. We know we just went through a pandemic when our tax base has been hurting. This is about the financial sustainability of this community for the long term. We are in good, good financial shape now, but we want to keep it that way. And when it comes to the financial situation of the province, we're all hurting with rising costs. I know, and this council certainly knows, because we have been talking about this really for a couple of years now, and we recognize that these changes had to be made. And to suggest that this is about politics or trying to turn this into an election issue and chanting, Barry Manuel's got to go, you think I'm doing this for politics? If this council were worried about getting reelected, we wouldn't be doing this. We recognize that we're going to lose support, particularly from the union and those connected to them, but we are prepared to do that because we also know, because we're hearing it from lots of citizens who are telling us, stay the course, don't give in, you're doing the right thing. They may not be on Facebook and they may not be at the rallies, but they're here in this community. So for the CUPE representatives, the people who have all the strong talk, talking about us making things so hard, starving people out, it's just, it's, it's not sensible to look at it that way. I'm not here for political reasons. We're here for the best interests of the town. And people know that. People in this community know that. This council, doesn't qualify for a benefits package. It doesn't qualify for a pension. I would be the lowest person paid in the union if I were in it, and council makes about half what I get. It's not about the money. These are people who are born and raised here, who know this community, and you're going to let, and we're going to sit here and have people come in from out of town and start shouting and bawling at us and how disrespectful we are and shame on me and shame on council? Really? And if you think that you're going to do that and make accusations and not get a response and not for us to stand up for ourselves and for this community, you're mistaken because that's what we're here to do. We represent 14,000 plus residents. These people are protecting the union workforce who have a very fair agreement and the proposed changes, as I've said all along, are going to have minimal impact 
on employees. And to talk about stripping away all the rights, it's just not the case. And to speak to some more comments that have been made at rallies and in the media recently, particularly Ed White, the national rep from QP, and his comments that suggested that myself as mayor and as council don't care about the citizens, don't care about this town. When Allison Coffin spoke, he said it's a welcome change. This kind of rhetoric is what's been going on. It's not this side with spin and rhetoric. We are going to continue to get the facts out there. And Mr. White, we care about our history too, but we also care about our future. And our future sustainability is important to us. We do a lot of good things here in Grand Falls, Windsor. We've got a great community. We do a lot of things that are going to improve and do improve quality of life for people. We have programs and events, and we have all kinds of infrastructure, parks and playgrounds and recreation. We have services that are second to none, and yes, the employees do a good job. They do. We never said that they didn't. But the thing is, we have to realize that something has to give. We cannot continue with increasing insurance premiums, increasing wages, increasing pensions, and expect that we're going to be able to continue all the services, programs, something will have to give, or obviously, taxes will have to go up. We want to continue investing into our community, Mr. White, and that's what we will continue to do. The rhetoric and the spin has been outrageous. And even the workers don't know what they're out for in many cases, because the same stuff that you're spewing at the rallies is being fed to the workforce as well. And that is sad. Shame on me. Shame on you, Mr. White. We also want to move forward as a town and not backward, as you're suggesting we're forcing the union to do. It's not the case. We are going to continue to get the facts and the information out to our residents because we've been forced to get to this point. As I mentioned earlier, no cooperation no willingness to discuss these important issues to the town. So I'd ask you, Ed White, if you say that me as mayor and this council don't care about this town and the citizens, how do you expect them to think that you care? In closing, I'd just like to thank you for watching this video. Uh, we've had the opportunity to get information out there that's important to our residents and we will continue to do so. Uh, just to touch on a few things again, uh, you know, we want to tell people that we also want to get back to the table. And I know that there's been a lot of talk and will continue to be about the union's willingness to get back to the table. And that is fine, provided that it's not the same as all our other trips to the table. When we are seeing a no concession policy, when there is, we want nothing changed, but we also want this. So are we going to go back to the table to agree to everything, to uh, just give in. That's not why we started this. We feel like this should have been rectified long ago and I know personally I speak for council in saying I'm not willing to take the blame which is going to be thrown at us for this lockout. We don't want to be here either. We want a resolution but we are looking out for the best interest of the community. Alison Coffin visited yesterday in the rally. She said that the easiest thing to do is to lock out. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's the hardest thing to do. And this is definitely impacting this council and our families. And it's very difficult on everybody. Management who continue to get attacked and all kinds of insults and accusations, they are also taxpayers and citizens of this town. They're also employed by the town of Grand Falls, Windsor, and are doing their job to try to, to get the best we can for the citizens of Grand Falls, Windsor. Are we perfect? No. We never will be. But we're going to keep trying for the residents. And in this case, when it comes to all the information, we will continue to speak to the facts and not just give in. 
We've been accused from the beginning of this process of this being an attack on our workers and our workforce, and it's just not the case. We are doing this in the best interest of our citizens, and that's why we're taking a stand. And we want the union to cooperate with us, to continue to cooperate, to grow our town, to build our town, to make sure that we have a healthy and prosperous future. When you look at some of the accusations and comments and things that are being said, it's sad. And I wonder who's attacking who. Once again, I'd like to thank you for your time. I uh, just want to say if you have any concerns or comments uh, or anything really that you want information on or have questions about this situation, you can call me, you can call any member of council and they will give you the information uh, that you're looking for and certainly answer any questions that you have. We'll continue to pro provide updates as we uh, go through this situation. We hope it's resolved very soon. And we want to get back to work. We want to get back to the work of our community for our citizens. Thank you.